Hello, good people. Just released today, Black Forest Labs release four new Flux tools. The first one we're going to look at today is Flux Fill, and this has to do with in painting and out painting. The next two tools are improved depth and canny control net models, and I'll be doing a separate video on these. And finally, Flux Redux, which is basically an IP adapter. You can get all these models on Black Forest Lab's main Hugging Face page. As always, I'm going to leave links in the description below for everything you need. Now, once you scroll down here, you're going to see the canny and depth models. These two are LORAs for those of you with lower end GPUs. We have the Redux one here, the fill model for in painting, out painting, and the full canny and depth models. Now, word of caution, they are big files files except for the LoRa files which are only 1.2 gigabytes. The rest, the fill, canny, and depth models are all 24 gigabytes so to run the original models you'll need a pretty big GPU. Now with that being said there is an FP8 model that exists. Shout out to Yogo Tatera for converting this to an FP8 model and it's only 11 gigabytes and if you know me by now I only have 8 gigabytes on my card and I can run this model pretty decently. Now in terms of where to put them I'll show you in a second but you can get all the basic workflows on Comfy UI's examples page. Again links in the description below. However for some workflows I found that I ended up doing my own workflows just because they were too basic. For the in and out painting model you want to put it in this folder here under your main Comfy UI folder models diffusion models. And the workflow I have here is pretty straightforward. It's not too complicated. Make sure that you go into your manager and update all first. And if you get any red nodes, just go under install missing custom nodes and it'll show up here. You can just go ahead and install them that way. Now I'm going to break apart the workflow here so that you can see where everything connects. So here's the workflow broken down and uh, normally I don't like it this spread out. I like it nice and neat, but it's easier to explain it to you. So obviously you have your load diffusion model. This is where you're going to put the in out paint model. Model. Okay, so make sure that's selected. For those of you on the low end GPUs, I leave it on default. It's normally going to pick the best one for you, or you can select any of the FP8 ones here to see which works better for you. Then you'll have the differential diffusion node. You connect the model nodes together here. Let me move this out of the way. And then this end, you want to connect it to the model K sampler input. Okay, then we have our usual dual clip loader that connects to our clip text encoder here. For me, I'm using clip L and the T5 FP8. So you want to connect one end to here, and then you also want to connect one more to your negative clip text encode. Next, we have the flux guidance node, which you'll connect this conditioning to here, and then you'll see the node for in painting slash out painting. You want to connect this input to positive. Now the conditioning by default is 30, which works well. I've tried 10 and 20. It may depend on your image, but I think 30 is a good place to start. If it's a little too much, you might want to bring it down a little bit. You also want to take your negative conditioning and connect it into the negative input here. Since we don't use it for flux, I like to close it. Then we have our load VAE node here connect from here to here and also into the VAE decode node. We'll get to these other two afterwards. Then you have a load image node that connects image to pixels and mask to mask. On this side of the workflow, we already have the input model connected from earlier. And then from in paint conditioning, you just want to connect positive to positive, negative to negative, latent to latent. And then finally, from your case sampler, latent to samples in your VAE decode node, and then image to save image. Now, in terms of settings, like I said, flux guidance at 30, that's a good starting point. You can go anywhere from 20 to 40 steps. It's really up to you. CFG of one, Euler scheduler. Actually, I was using Euler beta and that's pretty much it. And the way this works is that in your load image, we're doing in painting, by the way, go ahead and choose your file. Now I already have a mask here, but basically what you need to do, right click onto the image, click on open and masked editor. Let me clear this here. And then you have controls for thickness of the brush. So if I bring this all the way up, you see how big the brush is, the opacity, and you can pick negative which looks like that. You can pick black or white. 
So for this example, I changed the hat and the face. I just brushed over it like that. Once you've made your selection, click on save node and you're going to see that mask there. Go ahead and generate the image. And we see here the result of my generation. We have the original on the left and the in-painted version on the right. For this example, I put a mask on her body and just put a dress. And you see that it gave her a pretty tight dress. <laughs> and this one, I changed the prompt to a blue floral dress. And it looks pretty seamless. It does a pretty decent job. Now, since it just came out, I haven't really played around with it, but there are other methods you can use for in-painting. There is crop and stitch where you can insert objects and in specific parts of the image. So I'm going to dive deeper into in-painting, but for now, I want to move on to out-painting. Now, the setup for out-painting is very similar except for one node. And you just have to add this node pad image for out-painting. I'm going to go ahead and break this up once again so you can see it. So now this time, your load image node is going to connect to this pad image for out painting node. And then let me grab the in paint uh, model conditioning node. Then you connect the image input into pixels mask to mask. So a slight difference compared to in painting. Now all you have to do here is enter the pixels that you want to extend the image. Now in the past you had to kind of do one side at a time if you did all four sides like you did in automatic 1111 for example. Sometimes you would see the seams. With this model I don't see that so far. So I basically took this image that was I think this image was 1020 by 704. On both the left and right, I added 400 pixels on each side, 200 on top and bottom. By default, the feathering set at 24. Leave it for now. If you find that you're still seeing seams, you want to increase that. And once again, I used the guidance of 30. Same settings as before, except I used 30 steps, I believe, in Euler Beta for the sampler and scheduler. And as a result, we see the original on the left here and the outpainted image on the right. You see there's more of a puddle in the foreground and it looks very seamless. We look at the cutoff portion here. We see that it extends from this part over. Then we see that sign in the background back here to get all this area here. Now if I really look closely here, I really can't see any of the seams. So this outpaint slash inpaint model seems very, very good. And as we look at the ground here where it added more of a puddle, yeah, very seamless. Really good model for outpainting, at least for this picture. I also did one more example, which the original was actually a SD 3.5 image in one by one, extended at 400 pixels on the top and bottom. If we look at this closely, the top again looks very seamless. However, I did notice this kind of weird pattern here happening, and that could be due to the plaid. But in terms of the seams, I don't see any. If this was a different pattern dress, we probably wouldn't even notice this. I wanted to show you this as well. When you use a low flux guidance, just don't mind the hat. I had to take that out in the prompt. I think this was originally set to 3.5 or something like that. This is what's going to happen when you do an out paint. As always, friends, let me know what you think in the comments below. And also tell me which video do you want to see first. We have control net canny here that you see on the screen. Control net depth, which I'll do in one video. And these are the Loras, by the way and Flux Redux, which is IP adapter. We'll cover all of this and more in the next videos to come. As always, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.